A lot of people in the comments have mentioned how they can't afford to get the care that they need. It's sick in my opinion that anyone has to make the choice between eating and paying rent or getting the care that they need just to function in the first place. I mean, talk about a trap, right? It's unfortunate that this is the world that we have to live in right now. And I also find it interesting how the media will blame so much violence on mental illness, which is absolutely a fraction of the cause, while at the same time, funding for mental health services is being cut again and again and again. I've even seen comments like, why don't you get a job with health insurance? I mean, that would be like telling a famous marathon runner who broke their leg that they just need to win another race to get the money to fix their leg, right? Well, unfortunately, there's no super easy solution to this or everyone in the world would have free effortless health care, right? So please don't get frustrated if I don't have all the answers for you in this video. There is, however, a lot of resources available that most people don't even know about. I'm gonna talk about many of the ones that I've found, but let's be realistic here. When I'm seriously symptomatic and can hardly even make food for myself, the last thing I could expect myself to do is drive to the local county offices, fill out a bunch of applications, get income verification, meet with workers, or to research online programs and apply for them. I've also lived in counties where the programs available were extremely limited. And then there's those who live in other countries with zero health care and most of the population there doesn't even know what bipolar disorder is. It's a tough situation and that's why it's become a common outcry for so many people. The resources and ideas that I'm going to talk about in this video might take some effort on your part to get the ball rolling. If you can't handle it, ask for help from someone you care about. If you can't do that, you might have to wait until you're feeling better or more stable to take these steps. You also have to be seriously committed to your health here. If you start feeling better and the first thing you do is hang out with your friends instead of the unfun paperwork or programs that are necessary for you to get care, you're just gonna keep going in circles. Lastly, keep in mind that I'm from the United States, so some of the things that I'm gonna talk about might not be available depending on where you live. So there's two primary issues here. Having access to a doctor is one and paying for prescriptions is the other. I'm gonna cover a ton of resources and I'll make sure to leave links in the video descriptions to make it easy to follow. So let's get started with having access to a doctor. The challenges that most people face are high co-pays and deductibles, access to only a small number of providers who might not even treat bipolar disorder, uh, needing to get a referral to a medical health provider, which can take even more time, uh, having a limited number of covered visits or coverage that requires a diagnosis before you can even get mental health treatment. For those of you lucky enough to have private insurance or government coverage like Medicaid, Medicaid, keep in mind that you have the right to appeal their coverage decisions, or you can request an exemption to the coverage if the treatment you need isn't covered. You might have to make some serious noise to get them to listen, but if it covers thousands in medical costs, it's like getting paid thousands to deal with these fun organizations. Also, ask your therapist or your doctor if they have experience with insurance issues and if they can submit claims to the insurance provider. A lot of them know how to play the game if you tell them your struggles. Now, there's an amazing organization called NAMI, or the National Association of Mental Illness. They have a helpline that can help with just about anything under the mental health umbrella, short of a crisis situation. If you call 1-800-950-6264 and ask them things like, where's the closest free support group or a center near me? Uh, what low cost treatment programs are available and so much more. They can help you with all of that. I'm also gonna include a link in the video description to uh, NAMI's website and their helpline, so check that out. You can also try to call 211 from your local phone to access your local community information line. And they can also refer you to support groups, homeless shelters, uh, low cost therapy that's available and a lot more. Another really cool resource is the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration Treatment Locator. I know the name says substance abuse, but it has resources for countless mental health issues. It's a national organization that shows the location of low-cost therapy options, uh, free mental health clinics, and support groups, so check that one out too. 
All right, moving on. Uh, a lot of people might not know this, but every licensed clinician out there adheres to an ethics code that says that they're supposed to offer some services free of charge as a gesture of goodwill, similar to the way lawyers often do pro bono work. Grab the phone book and just start going down the list of therapists in your area. Call them and ask if they have any pro bono slots available. Make sure to tell them how motivated you are to do the work and explain your financial situation to them. It might take time to find one that says yes, but that could be a life-changing turning point for you if you do find one. There's also an organization and website called Give an Hour that works with doctors and grants to provide volunteer services. They have literally donated hundreds of thousands of hours to those in need, which is just amazing. Check out giveanhour.org to see if they can do something for you. And in fact, there's so many websites out there run by volunteers who you can just email, call, text, or you can even get live one-on-one -on -one or group chat counseling and so much more. If you just poke around online, you'll see so many of these. There's so many that I could make a whole video just listing them, so I'll at least include some links to those in the description also. It might take a little legwork, but check out what's available in your state or country. There's also bipolar support Facebook groups with thousands of members. I belong to quite a few of them, and these resources might not include Harvard doctors all the time, but if you need help now, there are some incredible organizations at your fingertips and you really can't beat free. For those of you who are working right now, see if your employer offers what's known as an Employee Assistance Program, or EAP. Uh, they can often provide things like short-term mental health care, uh, get you referrals, and a lot more. EAPs can set people up with bereavement counseling, uh, trauma counseling, stress reduction and management coaching, uh, anxiety support, and even relationship counseling. Check in with your work's HR department and see if you have access. A lot of people do and they just had no idea that these resources are even available to them. Now, this next option is really cool. A lot of graduate schools or teaching hospitals have clinics where students see people at hugely discounted rates or sometimes even free. Don't be afraid of the fact that they're students. I've been to teaching medical centers and I found that the students tend to be a lot more motivated and caring than some of the burnt out doctors I've seen. They always have a supervisor or are supervised by a licensed professional anyways, so you really can get exceptional care there. It's not a bad place to check out for sure. Heck, there's even massage schools and chiropractic schools that offer super cheap services. Even a good massage can make a big difference in the way we feel. Human touch can be very therapeutic, so check that one out too. Now here's another awesome resource. I have a few friends that are taking classes like photography or music at a junior college because they qualify for free education with low income. If you're a student, school campuses often offer a lot of medical services and sometimes they can actually be really good. My friends are not only furthering interest in their hobbies or education, but they also get access to free medical services that way, so it's a total double win situation. Okay, so this next one would be local support groups or group therapy, which can be really cheap or free. I've lived in some towns that have some of the most amazing free groups, and I've also lived in towns that don't, so it's something that you just have to check out. Where I live right now, they actually have a big peer counseling center run by volunteers and they have meetings exclusively for those with bipolar disorder. I've made some really cool friends there and I actually learned a lot more than I ever thought I would, so it's another really good resource. Now the next option can be totally hit and miss from my personal experience. A lot of places like local churches offer free counseling, quote unquote, but for me personally, and absolutely no offense to my religious viewers, I didn't get much more than being told that I just need to pray more or attend church more often. I found that there's a really big disconnect when it comes to 
true knowledge about mental illness in the church. I know they're doing their best to help and that's very noble, but that does not mean that they're qualified to treat something this serious. For example, if you had diabetes, you couldn't realistically expect going to church more often to eliminate your need for insulin. I'm just being realistic here. However, if you do attend church regularly, a lot of them do have funds that might help you pay for outside services like medical care, prescription costs, and therapy. So it's at least worth asking if your church happens to offer something like that and more power to them if they do for trying to help. The next thing I'd suggest is checking out uh, phone apps that can be really good for coping skills. There's mood chart tracking apps, stress management and breathing apps, uh, Bipolar Hope Magazine even has their own app. Um, there's positive affirmation apps, uh, wellness trackers, and a lot more. I personally have even free joke apps on my phone just in case I'm feeling down and want to read something funny. Apps are far from a replacement for professional care, but nevertheless, it's at least another resource or tool to help if you haven't considered that yet. There's also some amazing podcasts about bipolar, depression, anxiety, and even counseling that have taught me an unbelievable amount of information. In fact, I fall asleep listening to them all the time. So if you have a smartphone, turn it into a free mental health tool. So next I want to talk about something that I had to examine in my own life. And it comes down to priorities and hard responsible choices. There are so many people watching this video right now, and I'm no stranger to this, who spend enough money on Starbucks, nicotine, alcohol, eating out, and other things that would easily cover the cost of a doctor or a therapist visit each month. Just take a look at your bank statement and add them all up. I did that and it was shocking. You might even feel a little upset that I even pointed this out. I get it. I'm a little stubborn when it comes to my morning coffee, but if it meant the difference between my mental health and drinking expensive coffee, well, we all know the right choice here. It comes down to getting sick enough of the suffering to make some hard choices and give up some of the temporary small comforts that we have. I'd say it's a very worthy sacrifice to enhance the quality of the rest of your entire life. If you don't think that you're worth it, then do it for your spouse or your kids or those that you care about that have to be around you. The next time you're sliding your debit card at the local convenience store, try to remember this one. All right, so on to the next tip. And although this is a simple one, it's where I've personally learned more than almost any single source ever. Now bear with me here. When people hear the word self-help, it can be so off-putting. If we're sick, how in the heck are we supposed to just help ourselves, right? Here's the thing though, some of the best bipolar specialists in the world who cost an arm and a leg to access have put all of their best stuff into one place. The best part is that you can access all of it for about the price of a couple of fast food meals. I'm talking about self-help and bipolar treatment books. Now, I'm not a huge reader, and when I'm symptomatic, the last thing that I can do is read a 500-page book or some crazy long article. I mean, there's no way. I have about 10 unfinished books next to my bed right now. And that's probably one of the reasons why my videos are so popular is that people can just lay in bed and listen to them. If you aren't much of a reader like myself, check out all of the cheap audio books or podcasts about bipolar disorder out there. I know you, can have, you can't have a conversation with the author like a therapist, but these experts have spent months or even years carefully putting together their best advice into one affordable place. If you can get 10 hours of expert advice read to you for 10 bucks, that sounds like a pretty darn good, good deal to me. Now, if you'd rather lay in bed watching the news or playing video games before you go to bed instead of spending just an hour working on your mental well-being, that means you're normal. Uh, of course, people are drawn more to distractions than facing their deepest problems. Again, it comes down to your desire and commitment to not suffer like this. Distractions are only going to prolong the inevitable, which is more suffering. This video is getting a little long, so the last thing that I want to talk about is for those who have lost their job or can't work and are at their absolute wits end and can't even function enough to take care of their most basic needs. This would be applying for SSI, Medicare, or disability. 
Many countries have a system or a program like this. Most people have paid into SSI or disability their entire lives. It's taken right out of our paychecks and that of others to help in situations exactly like this. For many, it's a right, not so much a privilege because they've paid for it. The money's there. I know some people have emotional hurdles associated with the idea of being, quote, disabled, but it doesn't even have to be forever. You can stay on it long enough to get the care you need or indefinitely. I'll dedicate an entire video eventually to talking about the whole process, but here's the highlights. If you're working, it can be almost impossible to be approved for disability because it's to help those who can't work. I know that sounds like a trap, but if you can ask help from family or friends or a spouse or someone to support you while you aren't working and go through the application process, it could change or save your life. Depending on how much you've worked in your life, the benefits could easily pay for rent and groceries. You'll also have access to all the medical care that you need once you're approved. It's really common for people to be denied their first, second, third, or multiple times when they apply. This is kind of the government's way of weeding out those who really need it. So don't quit. Your health and life is totally worth it. You also don't need to pay some fancy attorney to help you either. Sure, they might be able to help expedite the process a little bit, but the decision isn't based on an attorney having their name on the paperwork. It's based on documentation from medical professionals. The best thing that you could do is to have a well-documented medical history that clearly shows why you can't function in a normal job. Get a diagnosis. Uh, if you're dangerously sick, go to the hospital. Get a copy and keep records of everything every medical issue or experience that you have. Document how much work you've missed and why. Uh, get a letter from ex-employers if you have to. If you aren't up to the task, ask someone that you care about to help you with the application process. Did you know that once you get approved, you can get help with financial aid to go back to school? Or did you know that you can still work part-time without it affecting your benefits once you're approved and ready to ease back into the workforce? This is a really important resource. So like I said, I'll discuss a lot more about this one in a dedicated video in the future. If you have any questions, comments, or would like to connect with me personally, I've got a really cool way that you can do this. There's going to be a link at the very top of this video description that will show you how to become a Polar Warrior patron. My patrons will always get a response back to questions, uh, get access to extra videos that are not available on this channel. They can find out what videos are coming out next on YouTube, join live video feeds where they can ask whatever they like, uh, help decide topics for future videos, and so much more. If you want to take your Polar Warrior experience to the next level, this is the best way that you can do this. All right, I have covered a lot of information here and it took quite a bit of time to put all this together. I'm gonna to make another video that talks about creative ways to afford medications next. It would just be way too much to have both topics covered in the same video. I hope this saves you some time researching and more importantly, I hope it gets you some of the care that you deserve. Stay well, thank you so much for supporting my channel by watching and lots more videos to come on Polar Warriors. See you soon.